As we enter the final hours of California's March 2024 primary, be wary of dirty tricks and deceptive attacks. We'll tell you what to watch out for and how to help turn out the vote in these final hours. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and we are literally in the final hours of the March 2024 primary here in California. And there is alarmingly low turnout. We really have opportunities in low turnout as conservatives to actually win seats in areas where Democrats are not expecting conservatives to do very well. Elections are won by those that show up. That's an old adage in politics, and it is quite true here. Uh, to give you an example of that in these final hours and why you dragging your neighbor to the polls uh, and getting them to turn out if they weren't inclined to vote and you suddenly like knock on their door or call them up, text them, and suddenly they decide, okay, because because you asked me to vote, I'll vote. Uh, you turning out votes that were not ordinarily going to show up could actually impact elections in a profound way. Get, let me give you an example of that. In the 2022 gubernatorial election, Governor Gavin Newsom won uh, over the Republican nominee, Brian Dolly, by like 56 to 44 percent. OK, it was a pretty sizable uh, margin. But think about this. Had every voter who voted for President Trump in the 2020 presidential election in California showed up and voted for the Republican nominee for governor in 2022, the result would have been a Republican governor would have been elected in California. Is that not just extraordinary? What it shows is the power of turning out votes. It's important that people understand that they are powerful, that they should not give up hope, that they should not just simply throw in the towel and assume that in the deep blue state of California that all hope is lost. No, that's what Governor Gavin Newsom, the liberal media, and the Democrat establishment want you to believe. They want you to think that you're powerless. They want you to think that there's no hope because they want you to stay home. They want you to move out of the state of California. They want you to flee. And that's why at Reform California, we are trying to do two most important things. Number one, we are trying to re-engage the grassroots and rebuild our movement to take back our state. We implore people not to flee, but instead to stay and fight. And number two, we're giving people a plan and tools to fight effectively. That's what the whole mission of Reform California is all about. Now, in theory, we should have Republican, a Republican Party of California doing this, but they can't find their ass with a search party and a map. They are incompetent. And frankly, I believe several of them are corrupt. I think they're stealing campaign contributions, or at least at the, at the very least, wasting campaign contributions on consultants and overhead. Um, it is shameful how inept, how inadequate how ineffective the California Republican Party has become. And that will be one of the things that we're trying to change going forward. Give them a swift kick in the ass and get them to actually get in the fight. But it also is incumbent upon us to elect better elected Republicans in California to the few seats that we do have a chance to win. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the Republican elected officials, too many of them, are not either willing to fight or not capable of fighting. Uh, and that's why at Reform California, we are launching a very ambitious project to create a Reform California caucus in Sacramento, uh, sort of like the Freedom Caucus in Washington. But this is uh, going to be in Sacramento in the state legislature, in the state Senate, in the state assembly of fighters who are going to stand up to the supermajority Democrats and give a voice back to the voiceless. People won't fight if they don't think that Someone's standing up and speaking out for them. So turning around things in California starts with getting more Republican elected officials to give a damn, to step forward and be our fighters, be our voice once again. That's why I'm running for the Assembly District 75 position. I will remain as chairman of Reform California and continue to lead our Reform California movement. Nothing's going to change about that. 
but I will then also hold a position inside the state legislature. I will be going inside the belly of the beast. And Democrats and even a good number of the establishment Republicans, who I'm trying to get out of the way and, and remove them and replace them with better fighters, they are terrified that I'm going to win in tomorrow's election, in, in the March primary. Uh, I want to give you this uh, story that we put up. It's at reformcalifornia.org, reformcalifornia.org. It says, what happens next if Reform California wins the March primary against the Sacramento Swamp? And the reason why we literally do have an election against the Sacramento Swamp is that in my race, Democrats, labor unions, and lobbyists in Sacramento have already spent, it says here in the article, $1.2 million. This article posted on Friday. The new number is now $1.4 million spent against me in the last four weeks to try to keep me from winning this assembly seat. That's how much they fear us. They fear a fighter. They're used to Republicans that are like potted plants. Feed them a little water, turn them towards the light. They don't do anything. They know I'm a fighter. And even some rhino Republicans are helping the Democrats. They have helped raise money for the attack ads against me. Rhino Republicans fueling and funding attack ads against me in this race because they don't want a fighter to go up and embarrass them. Because if I'm up there fighting and get other Republicans to join me in fighting, those go along to get along Republican elected officials. I'm looking at you, Brian Jones, the state minority leader, who's <laughs> worse than Mitch McConnell, okay? Um, they know that if we start fighting, that they're going to look bad, that we're going to force them to actually fight as well. And they don't want to do that because many of them are just looking to get another political position or worse, to be hired as a paid lobbyist in Sacramento. That's part of the problem that we've got here. And so when we win, there are a few things that will happen. In this article, I talk about the things that will happen. First, what happens when we win? As I note in this article, I'm going to be unveiling something called the Manhattan Project to revolutionize the movement in California, starting with restructuring the entire California Republican Party from tooth to tail. I also believe that the Senate Republican Caucus and the Assembly Republican Caucus need a complete overhaul. All of the staff that are up there need to basically be reviewed as though they should reapply for their jobs, and we need to replace many of them. We may, to bring, we may, may need to bring in uh, people who've never been involved with professional Republican politics in California before, because I think many of those people are contaminated by a minority mindset. They've got Stockholm Syndrome. We need to change our entire leadership team. We need to change our entire staff team. We need to change the tools and tactics that we're using to try to flip seats in California. Everything needs to be on the table. The Manhattan Project plan will be released in the coming weeks once we win. Second, I don't have time to wait. We got to get out there and hit the ground running in the target seats and do much more to flip those seats in November. And we've got some really good candidates, Christy Bruce Lane in San Diego, Jeff Gonzalez in Riverside, Suzette Valadares Martinez in Santa Clarita. These candidates absolutely need our support and we gotta get them across the finish line. We also need to recruit candidates for down ticket races for school board, city council, county board, all up and down the state of California. Sadly, the Republican Party does not recruit candidates for a lot of positions, and we forfeit the seats. Unacceptable. We need a good candidate for every seat, no matter how unwinnable the establishment thinks that seat is. And third, we need financial resources. And this is where you need to know about the dynamics of politics. Special interest funders are in charge of our corrupt political system in California on both sides of the aisle. Obviously, you know about the billionaire Democrats like George Soros. You also know about the government unions who take money out of people's paychecks and give them to Democrat politicians. But did you know that the business groups are not fighting for businesses or small business owners? The business groups are run by Democrat political operatives. And so all of the business groups in Sacramento, all the lobbyists give money to the Democrats. 
That's why the Republicans that are left in Sacramento do the bidding of the business groups because every once in a while the business groups will send them some scraps. We need to be answerable not to the elite. We need to be answerable to you, the grassroots. And the only way to have people with the spine and the independence, really, to stand up to the swamp is to have support locally back in their district. At Reform California, we're fully funded, not by any big donors. It's all by grassroots donors, tens of thousands of donors across the state who give an average contribution each year of $67, and usually it's $5 a month or $20 a couple times a year. I urge you to go to our website, help me maintain this independent fighting force by contributing at reformcalifornia.org. But what I want to do is teach other Republicans how to build grassroots uh, donor networks in their area, because that's the only way that our party can compete in California, not to ask the swamp for funding. If you want to change the system, they're not going to give change agents any funding. We got to get that from disgruntled business owners and voters who are done with California's corrupt political system. Help us do this by going online right now at reformcalifornia.org and contributing. And I'm going to be expanding that movement to other elected officials statewide. In these last hours, I urge you to get on our website at electionguidecalifornia.org, electionguidecalifornia.org. Share the voter guide that we put out, the Reform California Plain English Voter Guide. And I urge everyone to track their ballot. The track my ballot feature is available at the website we also put up, trackmyballot.org. That's trackmyballot.org. They can also get the voter guide there. But it allows you to get one-click access into the state of California's Track My Ballot system. You put in your information, and it will tell you whether your vote was received and counted in the election. Very important that you check and track your own ballot. I also want to point out at the Track My Ballot uh, site, you can find your polling center by clicking on that link there. You type in your address, and it will tell you how you get to your nearest polling center to get any ballots that you may need. Register voters that have not registered yet. Remember, you can register all the way up to 7.59 p.m. on election night. So there's no excuse not to vote in this election. Go to that website, trackmyballot.org. Go to a polling center before 8 8 p.m. on Tuesday, March 5th to resolve any issues and to cast your ballot. All right. Uh, Tomorrow's show is going to be all about the key races I'm watching besides my own, as well as how to interpret the results when they come in. What do each of the updates uh, on the election results reflect in terms of vote tallies? We'll go through all the mechanics behind the scenes of what the dynamics are in the uh, machinery of California's elections. Until next time, vote. Use our voter guide at electionguidecalifornia.org. Ship in a contribution in these final two hours or the final final few hours at reformcalifornia.org. And tune in tomorrow as we digest the election results. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.